Oh my gosh, is that a what? In today's episode of Dr. Nora, I take you through everything you need to know about the common viral wart. There are two distinct classifications of warts, and these are either called cutaneous or anogenital. Now we're going to be focusing today on cutaneous warts, which are warts that affect the hands, the feet, maybe the elbows, the limbs, for example. And in the next episode, I'll give you a sneak peek. We're going to be talking about genital warts, which is something that I see quite regularly in my practice. Okay, so that clears that up a little bit, but what are warts and why do they occur? Well, cutaneous warts are caused by a common viral infection known as human papilloma virus. Now, you may have heard this word many a times in your life, whether it's through vaccinations or whether it's through cervical screening, but it is really important to know that out there, there are over 150 different strains of human papilloma virus. Now, this is where it tends to get a little bit confusing for people. And certainly in my own practice, I have to spend a lot of time talking about the different strains of HPV because not all of them lead onto the dreaded C word, for example, cervical cancer, and also some of them can cause common warts and some of them can cause genital warts as well. So I'm hoping that these series of videos will help to clear up some myths. But why do warts occur? Well, we know that it's because of an infection from a virus known as human papilloma virus, and it generally tends to affect younger populations, for example, children. And I see a lot of kids in my day-to-day -day practice who often present with warts on their feet or on their hands, and that is because they're all touching each other, or they're playing in the same sort of areas, for example, they might be in the swimming pool, or they might be dancers, dancing barefooted in a hall, and warts are spread by skin-to-skin -skin contact. So we know that when you have got a wart, for example, you may shed the virus to another person. But what's interesting, you may actually hold the virus in your skin, and you may not show any symptoms of a common wart for up to 12 months after the exposure. Now, this is known as the incubation period. So, for example, you might have a kid out there who's got the virus of human papilloma virus, and they happen to touch one of their friends during the playground, and that friend of theirs may not necessarily exhibit any symptoms straight away, but it might take them a bit of time for them to develop the wart symptoms later on. It tends to affect people who also are immunocompromised. Now, this could be people who are, for example, on immunosuppressant drugs or who might be suffering from, say, HIV or other really serious illnesses. It can also affect people who have got damage to their skin barriers. Now, we know that from my previous episodes on Dr. Nora that our skin is our biggest barrier for any external stimuli. But just imagine if your skin barrier is broken or it's cut, you're more susceptible to picking up infections in future. Now, you'll note that I did mention kids, but it can also affect older adults as well. So... Basically, none of us are safe. As I mentioned before, warts can be transmitted through direct skin-to-skin -skin contact. That might be that you're shaking somebody's hand and they might have a wart on their hand and you accidentally touch it, and that later on can cause you to have symptoms yourself. Now, commonly speaking, there is an incubation period of up to 12 months. So that means that if you did shake someone's hand and they had a wart, you may not necessarily exhibit any symptoms for up to 12 months after the initial exposure. So it's really hard to tell where the wart came from or who even gave it to you. But what do they look like, Dr. Nora? What do warts actually look like? Well, when we look at warts under a microscope, or even just with our bare naked eye, we can see that the wart itself may have a number of different appearances, but commonly speaking, it tends to look raised, it tends to look like a rough, scaly surface, and it might feel a bit like there's something stuck on your skin. When we look at it with a microscope, we can then have a look more clearly at the surface of the wart and say, yep, that definitely is a wart. Not only do warts look rough and scaly, but they may also either be solitary, so that means you have one of them, or you might have a cluster of them as well. And they may appear like a cauliflower appearance as well. So if you have a look at a lesion on your hands or you notice something a bit odd or unusual, it might be worthwhile taking a look. And if you can't quite work it out, well, that's what we're here for. Go and see your medical doctor for a proper diagnosis. Okay, so we know how warts are transmitted and we know what they look like, but where exactly on the body do they affect? Well, for the cutaneous warts, they typically tend to affect the hands, the soles of the feet, perhaps even the knees or even the elbows as well. Some people may experience warts underneath their nail bed and that can lead to a bit of issues in the future. For example, their nails may become a little bit deformed or they may not grow properly. And speaking of issues, well, what could possibly go wrong if you do have a wart? Well, generally speaking, warts tend to be very cosmetic in nature. And so that means that people, especially young kids, may feel a little bit embarrassed when they're at school and they've got some warts because their friends might be a little bit hesitant to go near them. And going on from that as well, perhaps at school, they may not be able to go swimming because warts are contagious. And so the teachers might ban them from swimming as well. So aside from the embarrassment of having a wart, it could also be a little bit of a stigma as well when people are surrounding you. And like we mentioned earlier, if they do affect your nails, for example, it could lead to some 
abnormal appearances of the nails if they are not treated. And not to mention if they do affect your feet, and I've seen this so many times, if they affect your feet in between your web spaces of your toes, they can be very painful to walk on as well. And at this stage, generally speaking, you'd go and see a doctor for some treatment. Okay, Dr. Norris, you've mentioned treatment. That's amazing. Does that mean that if I get it treated, the virus will go away? not so fast. Unfortunately, our treatments do not cure the HPV virus, but it does remove the virus containing skin. So that means that if you did have a warts on your hand, we can certainly remove the virus that is within that skin, but you may still carry the HPV virus later on. So what treatment options do we have? Now, as always, it's really important for you to go and speak to your own medical doctor to find out what your individual plan is, because one treatment may not be best for one person, for example, if you might be pregnant, or it may be better suited for another person. Generally speaking, you may be offered a topical treatment of, say, for example, salicylic acid. Now, this is a treatment that can be bought over the counter, and this has to be used on a daily. And so what we generally tend to advise people who are using salicylic acid is to soak the affected area, say at night time, before you go to bed in some warm water, then get a dedicated pumice stone or an emery board. Now I say this to everyone because it has to be dedicated. Imagine if you're using your girlfriend's nail file or something like that and then you use it on your wart. Um, that's not very nice. It's not very hygienic. So make sure it's a dedicated pumice stone or an emery board. So that once you've soaked your finger or the affected area in some warm water, pair down the skin with your pumice stone or your emery board, then apply your topical lotion on. And this is a bit of an old wives tale, but it does actually work. Apply some duct tape over the finger, sleep with it overnight, and then gradually when you wake up in the morning, you take off the duct tape and hopefully some of the wart will have gone with it. Of course, you'll then remove the topical treatment and then you'll pair it down again with your pumice stone. And hopefully after about 12 weeks of daily treatments, about 70% of these warts do go away. So that's pretty good for a low key treatment that you can do at home. If you're not too keen on that, then you can also see a doctor for what we call cryotherapy. Now this is the use of liquid nitrogen, which essentially is really cold gas, and it works by directly spraying the area that is affected with this liquid nitrogen. Now, really important to know that this can cause some blistering once you've had it treated. And generally this blistering does last about a two week turnaround time. And you'll need to have treatment, say, every two weeks for at least three to four months to get rid of the wart entirely. Now, it is a little bit uncomfortable. And generally speaking, this is something that I tend to reserve for patients who are feeling very brave and sometimes doesn't always work with children because they move a lot or they fidget and they just can't tolerate the ice cold feeling. In some cases, you may get a white discoloration onto your skin with a possibility of scarring as well. So it's really important to know all of the risks before you get going with this treatment. In terms of success rate, we do get about 70% success rate after about three to four months of two weekly treatments with cryotherapy. Now, if that doesn't help you, then we do have another treatment called electrosurgery. Now, this is reserved for patients who've got large and treatment resistant warts. So that means that they've tried the topical treatments, they've tried the cryotherapy and nothing is shifting. So what happens in this situation is we may inject local anesthetic into the affected area and gradually pare down the wart bit by bit. This will most definitely leave you with a scar. And it's really important to note that if that's something that you're not willing to have, then maybe that's not the treatment for you. But Dr. Nora, all of these methods sound really horrific. What if I just left it? Will it go away by itself? Well, the good news is if you're a child, about 50% of them will gradually disappear by themselves in the first six months and 90% will go in the first two years. They are unfortunately a bit more persistent in adults, but hopefully with time they will settle down. But of course, if you are immunosuppressed, then recurrence can occur more frequently. Okay, Dr. Nora, so I know now what common cutaneous warts are, how they look like, what they're caused by by HPV, and how we treat them, but what is the correlation, if any, between warts on the hands and warts downstairs in our genitalia? Well, I just had to make this super clear because this is a question that I often get asked in my clinical practice. If you do have a wart on your hand, say for example, and you touch downstairs or you touch your partner downstairs, it will not cause genital warts. They are completely different strains of the virus. You remember that we spoke about the virus having about over 150 different strains of HPV. Hand warts do not cause genital warts. And you'll just have to stay tuned for the next episode where I discuss everything you need to know about genital warts and also what we do to treat them and how to protect yourself from getting them in the future. I hope you guys found this video useful. And of course, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below. And for now, take care and stay healthy. Thank you.